So I sat down and I watched the Jester movie, which is based on three short YouTube videos that were made within the last 10 years, a few years apart from one another. So this is definitely a passion project for writer-director Colin Krawchuk, I think is how you say that name. I apologize if it isn't. But I did sit down and watch all three of the shorts as well as the film, so cut me some slack. Um, okay. So I had never seen any of this before. I'd never seen any of the shorts. And, you know, there is a compilation video that puts all three of them together in one thing. They don't tell like one continuous story, the original three. They're just kind of like three um, disconnected stories with the same villain. And essentially you have this jester who is like a street magician of sorts. And he antagonizes people with his magic. And um, it doesn't usually go well for the participants. Um, the shorts are, you know, they're pretty cool. They're very low budget. Um, you can definitely feel that, but there's, def there's absolutely um, a love for it. That you can see this director has a passion for this particular um, character and story and as far as the movie goes you can tell that this is much more of a personal tale um, because there's a good amount of drama going on here and the movie definitely focuses on that drama a lot more than I was expecting um, so I don't know how relevant that story is to the director uh, himself, but regardless, I think it did a pretty good job. The production value is definitely elevated for it, albeit still pretty low budget. Um, we have the opening, which is this man who is trying to reconnect with his daughter after years of being... Um, estranged from her. He's trying to make amends um, at the behest of the jester's uh, desires, I, so, uh, I, I suppose. Um, these are not met. A tragedy befalls him, uh, and uh, the daughter comes to his funeral. Now, he's a guy who's ran out on the family, uh, formed a new family, and he had another daughter. This daughter and the the aforementioned daughter at the beginning, you know, they're not so cordial with one another. And uh, the one is trying to build a relationship with the other, but the other one is, of course, the hurt one. And we spend the rest of the movie kind of dealing with that drama, as well as the main antagonist of the film, um, the Jester. Now, the Jester, I think, will be likened to Art the Clown um, the most, you know, save for the gore. <laughs> there's definitely no gore in this to speak of. Um, there's some imaginative um, gimmicks and kills in here, but very, very little in the way of, like, violence or gore it, it, it's more of like a trickster right and and someone like art the clown is, is more of a sadist um so I, I i definitely see the similarities here in the performance of how he uses a lot of like physical humor where he's like really over exaggerating his physical body language to convey um you know his emotions or, or what he's feeling in that moment because this is a character that does not talk now on the side of not talking things i'm not a huge fan of the voiceless villain um, i think it's overplayed and i'm kind of tired of it to be honest we did it to death in the 80s for sure with jason and michael and so many others um so the whole voiceless villain thing is just old hat to me to to this point but i do really respect the fact that in this 
the director did find a clever way for the jester to have a voice, particularly with a phone sequence, which I was a big fan of, and I would like to see more of that in future voiceless villain. Uh, it doesn't have to be just like this, but to find clever ways for the killer to communicate if they just can't speak, right? Um, so some people find this intrigue and mystery behind voiceless killers. I find them to be just boring. Um, there's there's so little character to voiceless people, but it's not that you can't do the voiceless with tons of character, right? We just had the movie No One Will Save You, which there's basically no words spoken the entire film, save for a few. And Caitlin Deaver is able to really project this amazing persona and performance through limited speech. So it's, it's not impossible, but I don't know. I'm just... I'm so over it. I'm so over the voiceless killer. But moving on from that and getting to the story. Now, do I think this focus is maybe a little too much on the family drama? Yeah, probably. Mostly because I think the audience that is going to watch this is there for the titular character, the jester, his antics. And I feel like maybe we could have focused a little more on that. but. That being said, I do like that there is an attempt at an actual fleshed out storyline here with character arcs. I, I, I do like that attempt, and I think that they are able to be successful to a degree. And I do think that while the acting can be amateur-ish, I think the two lead girls do a pretty good job here. Um, so, you know, kudos to them. And I do think that the person who plays the jester, which I don't know, I didn't look into whether or not he's the jester in all the iterations, but speaking specifically on the film version of him, if it is a different guy or if it's the same regardless, but for this one in particular, um, I do think that he does a very good job, uh, of, of portraying this character and bringing it to life. This is not a character that can just be played by anybody for sure there is a lot of physical demand to it that is going to make or break the character and for this being the main antagonist that the as i said the titular character um you have to have somebody who's going to portray it in a way that's intriguing and interesting to the audience and i do think that they do a, a good job with that um but yeah, I it it actually kind of reminds me of like a like a more of like a United Kingdom UK um, horror movie based on like something a little bit more silly, as to where American cinema usually goes more of like the splatter gore route with like you know dumb bimbos and uh, throwaway characters and everything's tongue in cheek and very self aware and very silly. This movie does not go down that road at all this goes for a little bit more highbrow um of a take and it takes itself very seriously and it does try to tell a very emotional complex story about a broken family trying to mend itself after a tragedy in the family and i can respect the hell out of that i always like when the low budget filmmakers take on the task and go up against their limitations and say, screw it, I'm not going to just do the throwaway silly movie. I'm going to try to actually make a legit film. And while it might not be completely successful in everything that it attempts, I do appreciate the attempt and the swings that it goes for. I just would have liked a little bit more time spent with the jester and his antics and to get more of the thrilling aspects of this. But overall, I like the movie. Um, and I think that if you watch... So the shorts are very short. They're only 10 minutes or less a piece. So I would throw on one of those. They're fairly representative of what is here. It's just a higher budgeted version of that, but not much. Um, you do see a quality difference, though, for sure. Um, and this is executive produced by Eduardo Sanchez, uh, one of the directors and, and vi visionaries behind the Blair Witch Project. 
Uh, I don't know what his involvement would have been. Maybe it's just a production company thing. I don't know. Um, but you can tell that this gave them a budget. And I would definitely be curious to see what else this guy can do um, with more of a budget and um, a, a, maybe a new story, or maybe he'll make a jest or two. Uh, the jester seems to be something that uh, he's very about at the moment. So if that's what sparks his fancy, um, you know, have at it and, and try your hand at a sequel. But you know, we'll see. Um, but there you go. The jester. It is uh, streaming now for you to check out and the YouTube videos are free to get a feel for it. Do you like the gimmick of the jester who's doing magic tricks and uh, impossible things, very supernatural? Um, that's something else I think I didn't really mention is that it is a supernatural being and he's able to do magic things that are not possible. So, uh, and, and there are some cool things that he does for sure that I, that I did quite enjoy. And, uh, there's some things that I kind of was like very whatever about, but so it's a bit of a mixed bag, but I definitely respect the film. So, uh, these low budgeted things that are like passion projects for an indie filmmaker, I'm always going to support and I'm always going to say nice things. Um, at least in, you know, in that regard. So congrats on making a movie, getting your character fully realized on, on the screen. I think that's, uh, a pretty, a pretty remarkable achievement that few of us get to, um, bring to fruition. So congrats. And, um, yeah, we'll see what you make next and let me know if you watch it. Bye guys.